Merci. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to brief you on recent developments regarding the situation in Haiti and on the implementation of Resolution 2410 in the context of your discussions on the recently published report of the Secretary General. I am pleased to be here today with Mr. His Excellency Mr. Edmund Bokhit, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Haiti, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Ms. Michelle Bachelet, and Ms. Lunvio to my side. Briefing by Special Representative Lalim in February and the publication of the Secretary General report on Minujus on the 1st of March, developments in Haiti continue to combine progress in some areas and volatility or stagnation in others. While efforts to improve the security situation yield mitigated results, political uncertainty has continued with the fall of the government. No violent demonstrations have taken place since the 10 days of unrest in February, which regrettably led to 41 deaths and 100 injuries, according to latest estimates, and limitations to the, to the enjoyment of human rights. The repeated mobilization calls by opposition and activist groups to the population demanding the resignation of the president gain little traction. Nevertheless, rival gang clashes, potentially mirroring conflicting interests linked to criminality, continue to disrupt life in the southern neighborhoods of Port-au-Prince <clears throat> and produce isolated incidents in the north and Artibonite regions. In this context, we strongly condemn the attack on the 27th of March by heavily armed individuals against the Chilean ambassador's convoy visiting a Chilean NGO project in Croix de Bouquet, leaving one dead and three individuals injured. The Haitian National Police continue to demonstrate its capacity to handle security threats in the country, including through the planning and execution of anti-gang operations with limited support from Minujust. Furthermore, the reactivation by President Moïse of the National Commission for Disarmament, Dismantlement and Reintegration on the 12th of March is an important step towards the assumption of national ownership in violence reduction efforts. Through its community violence reduction expertise, Minijust is identify areas of support for the implementation of the Commission's mandate. On the political front, on the 18th of March, in a tumultuous sequence of events, Prime Minister Seance's government was subjected to a motion of no confidence by the Parliament's lower chamber. With 93 votes in favour, six against and three abstentions after an earlier interpolation session at the Senate failed to reach quorum. President Moïse has initiated consultations for the selection of his third government since he took office in February 2017 and has appointed Minister of Culture Jean-Michel Lapin as an interim prime minister of caretaker government. On the socio-economic front, an agreement reached on the 8th of March between the International Monetary Fund, the Haitian government and the Central Bank of Haiti has initially created a, a sense of optimism able to boost the fledging economy which is characterized by high inflation at 17% and a depreciating national currency. The concessional 0% three-year loan of $229 million was designed to provide support to the most vulnerable sectors of the population while promoting governance reform and anti-corruption measures. However, it is no longer advancing pending the appointment of a new cabinet. The same is true for the submission of the draft 2018-2019 state budget to parliament and an electoral law for the October elections. The establishment by President Moïse on the 25th of February of a facilitation committee for an inter-Haitian dialogue has the potential to revitalize the process of national cohesion. The five-member committee, including four women, has started consultations with a broad range of stakeholders and is developing the dialogue methodology. Its report on the way forward is to be submitted by the end of its 90-day mandate. While Minujust is supporting the work of the committee, including with expertise advising on technical and procedural aspects, the process of national dialogue is a complex one, especially in a context of lingering mistrust and polarization. In this respect, stronger efforts are required from all key actors to ensure the success of the committee's work and the crafting of national vision able to bring about economic reform essential for a healthy economy and for attracting direct investment, as well as measures for social protection, improving the rule of law, the fight against corruption, and of a more pressing nature, the organization of the October elections in a timely manner and in accordance with international standards. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, the end of a peacekeeping presence in Haiti is just around the corner. With that in mind, 
in order to create the necessary conditions for a successful transition, Minergis will continue to implement its mandate in order to build on and solidify progress in implementing the benchmarks. While the evolution of the situation in Haiti since July has confirmed the political fluidity and economic fragility of the country, we must also not lose sight of the progress made over the years and most recently the strengthening of the country's institution with the Haitian National Police first and foremost. In looking at the dashboard that you have before you contained here, you could see that the strategic five-year development plan for the Haitian National Police for 2017-2021 is on track. The ratio of police officers per thousand inhabitants is at 1.32, which is close to the target of 1.45, and the percentage of HNP personnel in the region has exceeded 35 percent. We support the desire of Haitian leaders to put an end to peacekeeping in Haiti and have the Minijus mandate end in October of this year, as well as their wish for Haitian authorities to fully assume responsibility for security in the country and all related obligations. We trust in the capacity of the Haitian National P Police to manage security risks without international operational support. The UN will continue providing strategic advice for the institutional development of the HNP and for strengthening its logistical capacities, including through bilateral assistance. At the same time, the recommendation of the Secretary General to continue supporting Haiti through good offices, human rights, and advisory capacities is based on our uh, evaluation of the most urgent needs for UN assistance. We believe that a small strategic advisory office, as recommended in the SG report, with the functions described therein, would be the ideal configuration to meet these needs, needs in Haiti at this stage. Recent developments have only confirmed that assessment. They have also once again highlighted the importance of simultaneously making progress towards attaining the SDGs through the United Nations country team and its activities in order to address the socioeconomic causes of instability in Haiti. If the recommendations of the Secretary General are approved, the work of Minujust over the next six months will be dedicated to the priorities of the leadership and people of Haiti, as I have already mentioned, as well as any other urgent priorities related to the benchmarks. Therefore, um, at the same time, we will also progressively draw down certain activities, withdraw the operational presence of UN uh, police, and prepare for a smooth transition towards a post-keeping presence. This will be a period of intense work during which the ongoing attention and political support of this council towards the Haitian people, the mission, and preparatory work will continue to maximize the impact of our collective efforts and ensure the uninterrupted course of the transition. I call on the members of this council, as well as the countries in the region, to step up their co cooperation with Haiti. Options for such engagement could include bilateral support to the country's priorities, as outlined in the United Nations Development Assistance Framework for 2017-2021, in particular, uh, strengthened capacities in the area of stability and rule of law, similar support for humanitarian priorities reflected in the humanitarian plan for 2019, including food security, disaster risk reduction, and ending the spread of cholera, uh, an objective that now seems attainable, will serve to strengthen the resilience and preparedness of the Haitian people and thus allow for further progress towards the sustainable development goals. In that context, I welcome that the government of Haiti has recently requested through the Secretary General to access the peace building fund. Discussions are underway on targeting sectors that could be catalytic for strengthening stability in the country. Mr. President, the partnership between the United Nations and Haiti must evolve in the near future in keeping with the discussions with Haitian leaders and other key stakeholders. However, that partnership will remain strong and rooted in our ongoing commitment towards achieving democratic progress, security, and prosperity for the Haitian people. I thank you.